Greetings from being in quarantine, where? Nantucket Island, okay? Nantucket is an island off the coast of Boston, off the coast of uh, Massachusetts, near Cape Cod. My whole job here goes trying to keep warm. It's started to warm up a little bit, but for most of the first, you know, four or five weeks that I've been here, it's been stormy. Huge waves, massive winds, and the ocean is right there, right there in front of me. I'll give you a look at it in a minute. Today is okay because it's, the sun came out and it warmed up a little bit. But most of the time I've been just trying to stay warm or dry or both, okay? Now I'm just doing this general talk and I thought I'd just bring in a few characters from our favorite topic, natural philosophy. And uh, they'll be kind of chosen at random in a way, not entirely at random. There are so many people involved here that deserve a mention can't mention them all, okay? Uh, what else can I say? I'll, I'll start that in a minute. Um, I don't have access to a whiteboard or a chalkboard, blackboard, and I don't have any uh, markers anyway, so I can't even improvise. So it's hard enough to find any supplies here, really. It's a small island and very few people on it. The good thing is there are there is no virus on the island, none whatsoever. And we go out hunting for geese to get food, and my son fishes. Oh, he's caught nothing yet because the fish haven't really come in yet. But they will. I'm going to move this a little bit. That better? Okay. Yes, bows, arrows. They're pretty sharp. The problem is they go right through anything. Okay, so if we want to talk about classical, uh, natural philosophy, the question is, where do we begin? Well, we could begin even with Euclid. Euclid was a geometer, but we need geometry in all of this business. We need a background, the space to set up everything in. Euclidean geometry, that as an idea, was replaced with Riemannian geometry. But before Riemannian geometry, Euclid uh, was the basis for the, the geometry. Rectangular, rectilinear geometry. Right angles. Let's move that again. So, what else? We're going to choose to start with Archimedes. Okay? Archimedes lived, now I just forget, 288 to 212. What's wrong with that? BC. It's going shorter. 288 to 212 BC. Uh, in Syracuse, which is uh, a town in Sicily, which is now Sicily, Syracuse. Now, there's a place in New York State, Syracuse, has a great university, has a great uh, physics department. Abby Ashtakar used to be up there. I don't know if he's there now, he may have retired, but he used to be there. He was a great uh, general relative or geometer. <coughs> so, what else? So, Archimedes, what can we say about him? Well, there's the famous law of flotation. Um, what is, how, how can I state it? The loss in weight, or the apparent loss in weight, of a body when you immerse it in a fluid, fluid could be a liquid, such as water, is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by the body. In other words, take a body, put it into water, and it will be lighter. You can carry a stone in water that you couldn't carry on Earth. Yeah? So, how much does that stone lose when you drop it into the water? Take out that stone and leave the vacuum area in there that the stone displaced. And take out that much water and put it over here in the weighing scales. That's going to be the loss of weight in the stone. So we, let's do something exact, right? So if I take a stone whose volume is um, a thousand cubic centimeters, one thousand cubic centimeters, and this stone weighs, let's say, uh, one kilogram, okay? That stone is going to appear lighter if I immerse it in water. Yeah, by how much? Okay, we can figure it out. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. The volume of this stone is a thousand cubic centimeters. So therefore then, the weight of a thousand gram, sorry, the weight of a thousand cubic centimeters of water is a thousand grams. So that stone, which weighed a kilogram, would be weightless in water. How about that, right? 
I could have chosen different densities and whatnot. Density, let, let's skip over that. I have an, actually an, a lecture on the web about all that stuff. Archimedes, great guy. Now, the thing about Archimedes was, not only was he a philosopher, a natural philosopher, he was a mathematician and he was uh, an engineer. He was dangerous because there was a war going on and the Romans were invading Sicily. And um, I can't remember if it was the Punic War or not, it doesn't matter. One way or another, Archimedes could design and build weapons, see? And he designed and built all sorts of interesting weapons. He had one that could pull the tail of a ship up and the ship would go to the bottom. He had, some people say this, that worked, I don't know if it worked or not, but he got shields which were parabolic. Now he knew that a parabolic mirror, concave, could focus rays to a point. If you had a mirror that was the shape of, it was concave, but it was a hemisphere or a sphere, spherical in shape, it wouldn't do that. There would be an astigmatism, right? So the rays would get focused to different points, but a parabolic shape will focus rays to a point. And Archimedes made a series of parabolic mirrors let's say there were shields or something, I don't know, but he could burn the sails of Roman ships in the harbour. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But anyway, he came to his end. Here's a story. During uh, World War II, or at least after World War II, uh, America, our great nation, rather than get rid of some of the assets, the human assets that Germany had, uh, we brought them to America. I want to tell you one particular case where that happened. Our rocketry, the rocketry, the body of knowledge which became the space um, program that NASA had was begun by German scientists that were imported over here after World War II. And the main man there was Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun had designed and built or designed and produced the V2 rockets that were used to bombard London during the Blitz or during the particular period that they were around, I can't remember. One way or another, they worked and they were lethal. Le with V2 rockets? Yeah, V2 rockets became Saturn V's eventually. So, Werner von Braun and his team were brought over here and they quite happily worked away for America, right? A new master, if you like. Now, I was teaching a seventh grade class one time uh, a young woman stood up and her name was Marjorie Stewart and she said, Mr. O'Reilly, I wasn't a doctor then, Mr. O'Reilly, my father brought over Werner von Braun and he had to use a revolver to do it. So Marjorie Stewart's dad was instrumental in capturing and bringing, at least he could have been part of a team, I don't know for sure, bringing Werner von Braun right over to the United States. Now that's historic in itself, Marjorie. Marjorie, if you're out there looking, that was an interesting story you told me in the seventh grade many years ago. Okay, so, uh, what else, what was I saying? Okay, so an asset to Rome could have been Archimedes. He could have been designing weapons for Rome instead of um, Syracuse, see? So, a Roman soldier was dispatched to pick him up, pick up Archimedes and bring him back and have him work for Rome instead. So what happened? Archimedes was calculating, maybe in the sand, I don't know. It doesn't sound like he was calculating the sand to me because his calculations were a little bit more accurate than what you could do in sand. One way or another, he was busy at his work and he didn't want to be disturbed because he was deep in thought. And the Roman soldier that was dispatched to arrest him and bring him back got incensed, got angry and killed him. Now, one can only imagine the fate of that Roman soldier thereafter Roman soldier probably worked nothing, but Archimedes was a valuable individual. You came back without Archimedes, where is he? I killed him. Why? He was knowing me. Take him out there and have him dragged apart by the horses. So that's probably what happened. Now Archimedes uh, did many other things other than the little, he's meant, remembered and ta taught in school for the law of flotation, but he did other things, density. Our, he's famous for the phrase Eureka. He wanted to know how to find the volume of an irregular body, right? How are you going to find 
You can find the volume of the cube by measuring it. You find the volume of the cylinder of the sphere also by measuring it. And Archimedes figured out how to find the volume mathematically, 4 over 3 pi r cubed, the volume of the sphere. Now, for that, he needs to have the idea of limits, maybe a little bit of calculus. So he must have invented that to do that. So he knew how to find the volume of regular objects. But how about a rough-shaped stone? Well, one day he was hopping into his bath and he noticed the water level rise. <gasps> that was his discovery. Okay, displacement of the water will also be his body volume. So he hopped out of the bath and ran down the street shouting, Eureka, I've discovered it with no clothes on. Now that's Archimedes. <coughs> Who will we do next? Well, let's take a break because I want to test to see if this uh, camera is focused in the right direction. Because this is the start. I'll have a lot of lectures that are like this. No uh, whiteboard because I don't have any. This thing is fun. All right, we'll take a break there.